Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, not destroyed. There are times I don't understand. Verses for you, 
but just focusing on this one verse. 1 Samuel 16, beginning at verse 5, and it says, And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Just looking at that verse, just to give you a topic, uh, giving you something for um, to put on your Facebook statuses, something that you can tell um, someone else on today. Our topic is going, is going to be, it's all a setup. It's, we're going to talk about that. It's all a setup. Um, and we know the story here. Um, we know how um, the Lord began to uh, talk to Samuel about uh, Saul, knowing, telling him that he has mourned for Saul long enough. Um, that he's sending him out. I need you to go. I need you to go and find a man named Jesse. And when you find Jesse, um, Jesse has a son that I need you to anoint. Now, he has several sons, but there's going to be one particular that you're going to anoint. And, 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 and Samuel was saying, well, God, how am I going to know uh, which one of these sons to anoint? God says, I'm going to show you which one uh, to anoint. So he goes there. And he sees um, uh, Jesse, and, and he's seeing all of his sons. Um, but every time that he comes up to a son, um, Samuel says, no, that's not the one. That's not the son. That's not the one who, who, who God wants me to anoint. And so Samuel says, surely this is not all of the sons that you have. And he says, well, I have one. Um, um, I got David out there, but David is David's young. He's out there in the field. Um, he's tending to um, the sheep. Um, but this, he said, "Well, go fetch him. Tell him to come here." So when David came in and came into the into his presence, um, um, he said, "This is the one that uh, the Lord said that I need to anoint. This is the one that I need to uh, um, pour the oil on." And so he anoints him. And so at this, I want to pause right there just for a minute and talk about the setup. Um, we know that a setup is the way in which something, um, especially an organization um, um, or equipment, is organized, planned, or arranged. Let me say that again. It is something that is organized, it's planned, and it is arranged. Um, and so, and so I said, I'm, I'm thinking about this setup that's taking place and what's going on and what's happening. And I'm looking at David and I'm saying, oh God, it's been a setup from the beginning. Because, because David and I was just tending to the sheep, he's tending to all of this out here in the field, not knowing that his, somebody is um, saying his name on the inside, not knowing that somebody is talking about him in another room that he's not even in. So what I'm trying to say is that there's someone that's even discussing your name in another room that you're not even in. You don't know nothing about it, but God said that it's all a setup. Uh, um, um, he said that I'm setting you up for the okie doke and sometimes I'm always saying I'm setting you up uh, um, for success I'm setting you up um, um, for, for prosperity I'm setting you up for blessings but in this you can't get weary in doing well so if David would have got weary out there in the field, he wouldn't have been able uh, um, to save his father's sheep from the, the bear's mouth. He wouldn't have been able to save his father's sheep um, from the lion's uh, mouth. But he couldn't get weary in doing well because he knew the job that he had to do. So uh, whoever you're around, if you're around somebody, just look at them and just tell them that it's all a sinner. Uh, um, so, so, so after he had anointed him, we know it, the story goes on, and I want to get to this part, and it, it gets to Goliath. Uh, um, when it gets to the part where uh, um, uh, they're surrounded by the Philistines, and Goliath has now came on the scene, um, and he has said that if you can send someone to come and kill me, uh, um, then we'll be your slaves. But if you can't send anybody to kill me, then you have to be our slaves. And so they're, they're, they're worried, they're frustrated, they're, they become weary in the season. Oh, God help. God help. They become weary in the season and they're trying to figure out now what are we going to do? We don't have anybody that can, that can take on this nine foot giant. We don't have anybody that can take on this, this, this thing that can, that can slaughter us. And so, and so at this time, David heard about this. Now, David, he was going back and forth. Now, his father sent him 
him to go and take some loads to take some food to his brother. Here, take this to your brothers and then bring me a report back of everything that's going on. Um, so we so we went, but at that time he just heard about what was going on, and and David went to and with his brothers was like, "What are you doing? You just trying to be here? You just being nosy about what's going on? Um, you need to get out of here. This is not a place for you." But then the king found out. God have mercy. The king found out that that David was trying to figure out what was going on. He was being nosy, if you will. And so the king said, tell David to come here. And so when David came, uh, um, David looked at the king and said, you know what, king? I'll fight. Hold it now. Hold on. Hold on now. Now, David didn't have anything now. David had nothing, but he said that he would fight Goliath. He said, I'll kill him. And so, and so as we get into uh, Samuel, one thing that I, that I love, he says, don't worry about the Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go and fight him. And Saul said, are you crazy? You must be out of your mind. You must be, you must be on something to think that you can take on this giant. But see, David knew, um, um, he knew the anointing that was on his life. He knew what was going on on the inside of him. He knew what was happening for him. So he was being courageous. Yeah, that's a good word, would you? He was being courageous and told the king that I'm going to go and fight him. So what are you trying to tell me, preacher? What I'm trying to tell you is that in your setup, you got to be courageous at a time such as this. That it's not a coincidence that God has sent this stuff to happen in this time. But what God is saying is that I need you to be courageous. Because one thing that the Lord dropped in my spirit is he said that I'm sending a revival. And so what we under, sometimes what we don't understand is what we don't get a lot of times is that we know what revivals happen. We're even in a season where a lot of churches sometimes have revivals. Uh, uh, they have these times, they have maybe one night, two nights, a whole week of revival. Uh, but if we look at the, the biblical definition or if we look at just the definition of a revival, it is a renewal in the body of Christ. It is restoration of the church itself to a vital and fervent relationship with God. What are you trying to tell? What I'm saying is God says that I put you in a place at a time like this to send revival to your spirit. But I can't allow you. I don't need you to get weary in this time. Don't get upset. Yes, everything is good. Yes, people are dying. Yes, uh, uh, people are sick. So much is happening. So much is going on. But God says, I need you to be courageous. I need you to be strong. I need you to mount up. I need you to spread your wings out. And I need you to fly in this season. Because in this season, after I do the revival this time, um, what God said I'm going to do is then I'm going to shift you to another level. Oh, God, help me in this place. Okay, so what he's saying is uh, when I shift you in this level, uh, um, just know that I have everything under control. That it seems like that our government officials don't know what they're talking about. It seems like they can't find a cure. It seems like they just don't know what to do. But God says that the government rests upon my shoulders. And I got it all where I need it to be. But I need my people in this season to not be weary and do it well. I need you to study your words. I need you to pray. I need you to lay on your face. And I need you to talk to me. I need you to have a relationship with me. Because what I want to do is I want to revive you back to the place where you first found me. See, what we messed up sometimes is that we've gotten away from when we first found Christ. We've gotten away from when we first found God. But God says, I need you to come back to me. And I need you to get in a place to be revived. He says that greater works is what I need for you to do. So I'm going to come and revive you. And now let me go ahead and help you because I'm going to go ahead and tell you what some of y'all are saying. I just can't do it. I just, I can't, I can't be in a re revive at such a time as this because so much is going on. I can't be revived at such a time as this because there's so much death. I can't be revived at such a time as this because there's so much sorrow. But God says that in Second Chronicles chapter twelve verse ten, He says, "Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities." In persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. And this is the point he says, for when I am weak, then am I strong. So what God is trying to tell you is that even when you feel like you're so weak, even when it feels like you're down, God says you're still strong because you can't die with so much life living on the inside of you. See, 
see what we fail to realize, and let me help you, because somebody else is going to say this, this part right here. You saying that, uh, uh but he's already started so much in me, and I've given up on that, or I don't know if he's going to do it, because it doesn't seem like we even going to make it to the next day. It doesn't seem like we're going to make it to the next hour. It doesn't seem like we're going to make it to the next week. But let me help you. It says in Philippians 1 and 6, it says, being confident of this very thing that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So don't worry about what's going to happen. Hold on to the promises of God because if God said it, it shall come to pass. If he begun the good work in you, just know that he has to finish it because his word says so. And he's not a, a God that shall lie. But he's going to perform the things that he did. I'm almost finished. We're getting out of here. My time is almost up. But the very last thing that I have for you is, 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 is it's a setup. It's a setup where God's getting ready to do. It's a setup of the things that God is doing even at this present moment. And, and if I can't, if you don't remember anything that I ever said to you on this day, remember that delay doesn't mean that it's denied. It doesn't mean that just because the thing that God said is delayed, that is not going to come to pass. But hold on to what God has spoken in your life. Hold on to what God has said in your life. Because it's getting ready to unfold in a manifestation glory of God. It's getting ready to rest upon you and your family. But you can't neglect the promises of God. Because what God said shall come to pass. But so always remember that delay does not mean it is denied. And get ready for revival time. Because God says, I'm getting ready to shift you. I'm getting ready to shift your ministry. I'm getting ready to shift you um, in the relationship with me. You're going to another level. Don't worry. I got it all under control. I got it in my hands. I know exactly what's about to happen. Because I'm God. And I hold all power. So if you remember this, that it's just a setup. That God strategically placed us here. At a time such as this, to get our attention, for us to pass the test, and so that he can shift us to another place and to another level. Wherever you are, just begin to glorify God, just begin to lift up his name, I'm done, because it's a setup, and God is getting ready to do a new thing. Hallelujah, and God, we bless you now for the word, God. We thank you for what you have said and what you have done. Because we know, oh God, that in this setup, you got all control because delayed doesn't mean it's denied. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. So I'm going to open up where you are in your rooms, in your bed, wherever you are. I'm going to, we're going to open up the invitation for you. If you are not saved, you're watching, you're not saved, and you're saying that, well, I, I need God in my life at such a time as this. Maybe you need someone to agree with you, hallelujah. We're going to pray with you, hallelujah, wherever you are. If you can just lift your hands, because God is setting you up. He's setting you up for the miracles. He's setting you up for salvation. He's setting you up, hallelujah. He's setting you up for the blessing and the healing that's coming forth. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, we lift our hands to you, God. We glorify you for what you are about to do, God. We we know right now, oh God, even the ones, oh God, that need you, oh God, the ones that want to receive you, God. We know that we're sinners, God. God, so we confess our sins to you now in the name of Jesus. God, we, we asking you, oh God, to save us now. God, we, we are asking you, oh God, to fill us with your precious Holy Spirit. And we're asking you, oh God, to move within us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, those of us, oh God, that have become weary, oh God. God, we're asking, oh God, that you send strength down in the name of Jesus, oh God. Those of us, oh God, that just in a direction that we don't know where to go, God. We're asking now, God, that you would just show us the way. Keep us in perfect peace while our mind is stayed on you, God. God, we thank you, God, that you saved us, oh God. We're thanking you, God, that you delivered us. And we are thanking you, oh God, that you have set us free. God, we love you now. We glorify you. And we're thanking you in advance. For it is in your son Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 